TransUnion is officially using AI to help banks make lending decisions. They also doubled the amount of people that they said that they were going to lay off from 300 to 600 people. With TransUnion laying off a lot of their staff and buying an AI company, it's literally a matter of time before they start implementing AI in the dispute process. Here's what you need to know right now. Video, we're going to talk about the new company started by TransUnion and how they're going to be using AI and how it's going to affect you in the future. All right. So as you guys can see right here, we're on the TransUnion website and it says TransUnion technology transformation reaches the next phase with introduction of one true a platform built for AI powered data collaboration. All right. Now you can see here from Yahoo Finance that TransUnion nearly doubles previously announced layoffs to 640 employees in Illinois. And that's actually the problem because you can see down here, it says Chicago based credit reporting giant TransUnion is nearly doubling its statewide layoff to 640 employees as part of a broader cost saving initiative announced last year. The company previously reported that 339 employees will be laid off beginning in February, but an additional 301 employees are also receiving pink slips in Illinois, according to a required filing with the state Friday. Now, if you don't know, TransUnion, they did mention this last year. They said they were going to be cutting employees, they're going to be cutting costs. Now we see why. Watch this. In November, TransUnion announced that they're going to cut up to $140 million in annual operating expenses by 2026, with half of the savings to be realized this year. The company, which has over more than 13,000 employees in 30 different countries, said that 10 percent of his workforce will be affected by the cost reduction program through either relocations or layoffs. So now let's go ahead and go right into this. So this is one true. It's going to be talking uh, essentially helping lenders with data management, identity, delivery and analytics. All right, guys. So now this lines up with a lot of the other products that TransUnion has as well. But let's take a step back. A lot of people don't even know. And they just think that that TransUnion only provides a credit score and credit report. Let's go ahead and talk about a few of those things right off the back, okay? So number one, TransUnion does not provide or create a credit score. They simply give their data to someone that already makes the score, which in this case could either be Vantage Score, which it has some ownership in, along with Experian and Equifax, and of course, uh, FICO, as we know, okay? And so it takes that information that's on their, uh, their credit report, and they send that to the scoring algorithm of the choice, okay? And then that scoring algorithm says, hey, based on what's on this credit report, this is this score. That's what we know TransUnion to be just like the other credit bureaus. Now, hopefully TransUnion is only doing this in their business section or the other departments of services that they offer. Hopefully this does not carry into the dispute process or anything that has to do with our credit reports. Because let's be honest, it's literally a matter of time before they switch out just having humans do everything to a, some type of automated process or having computers on the back end. It's simple. The company plans to to grow and do more with less employees, which means that you're either not doing that work or you're having something or someone else do that work. I don't know about you guys, but this sounds to me like they're going to be either investing more in something and it's obviously not going to include people. A lot of people don't know that TransUnion actually has a lot of other small businesses and other means of services that they actually you know, uh, provide on the business side. Let's take a look at that because this is how it's going to affect you. So a lot of people, like I say, when they go to TransUnion.com, they only focus on the personal side, okay? Let's take a quick look at what that looks like. So on the personal side, you have everything on TransUnion, okay? So it essentially says, hey, which way is your credit going? They go into all of their products from credit monitoring, all these things that they monitor different services that they offer, things of that sort. So we know them on the personal side. But what a lot of people don't pay attention to is the business side of TransUnion, okay? Not just for small businesses. They work with major companies and major brands. So here's what you have to understand. Number one, that they work with a various amounts of industry. They work in the, here, let's go ahead and zoom in on this. They work in the automotive industry, background screening, collections, communications and energy, financial services, gaming, which they just actually just either partnered, merged or purchased, um, you know, some type of gambling website that they've been talking about. So now they're into that as well, too. Healthcare, insurance, media and entertainment, 
the public sector, and of course, retail as well too, all right? So now, here's the thing. This is how it's going to affect you as, as a consumer, all right? So now, on the automotive side, they're going to be giving them deeper insights, okay? So for example, back in the day, or I would say as of right now, or probably before today, they would just simply say, hey, this is this person's credit score based on the FICO algorithm. That's number one. And here's the person's credit report. Make your decision. Have a nice day. With this new one true system with, again, having AI on the back end, it now may be able to say, hey, listen, this is what our opinion is on this person based on a lot of data that's already out there. OK, now let's go ahead and flip back over to I want to show you guys this. OK, so now let's go ahead and see what does that break down to? It breaks down into four different layers. All right. And it says one true consists of four key layers, each playing a critical role in driving innovation and scale in TransUnion solutions. OK, number one is a data management layer. This enables rapid streamline and permissible access. TransUnion stores a public proprietary, online, offline, credit, and non-credit data in accordance with laws and regulations in every juridic jurisdiction where we operate. Number two is going to be the identity layer, which matches online and offline personal and digital identity fragments to a person or entity with speed and precision to resolve identities for each use case. Number three is going to be an analytics layer. This enables the combination of human intelligence, watch this, AI and machine learning to generate actionable insights from shared analytic tools across credit, marketing, and fraud mitigation. Let's pause real quick right here, okay, guys? So essentially what they're saying is, is that a lot of times uh, there were many cases where people were essentially committing different types of fraud. Sometimes is knowingly and unknowingly as well, too. We're talking about diving deep to when a person actually, let's say, for example, a bank uh, let's say a credit card company uses TransUnion as a reporting agency when a person applies for that credit card, whether they get approved or denied. Now, when they essentially apply for that credit card, TransUnion is going to be on the back end saying, hey, this income doesn't match the income that they had some time ago. This does not mean that this person may is, is creating some type of fraud. This just means that, hey, listen, this is a flag. Now, let's be honest. A lot of banks approve people they should not approve for various things, whether it's homes, cars, you know, credit cards, you name it. But now this can now say, hey, listen, this is something you may not know. This is something where this person may have changed their name. This is something where a person was at this job for a specific amount of time. We have no idea what type of data is going to be in this as we, we know what's on the report, right? We know it's on the credit report, but then there's also our identities outside of the report, right? Like on social media or um, your job history or your relationship status, your relationship history. Who knows how deep of the information they're going to be giving? Because they said some of this stuff is public and some of this stuff is not public. Let's keep going. And right. number four, finally, the delivery layer. This leverages a unified data governance framework and permission-based access controls to help ensure legal and regulatory compliance audibility, and the opportunity to easily revisit models as necessary, all right? So essentially, they're simply saying, hey, listen, we're going to be using AI on all these different layers to help us identify the person, to see if this person is going to be, uh, you know, having some type of fraud, if something's mismatching, if something's not making sense, if the application information is not is not actually lining up with the person's history, they're going to be looking into that, and as well as decision-making and post product marketing and pre-product marketing. That means that now when you guys get something in the mail, it's going to be an enhanced version. So it's you know, like when you get something in the mail that says, hey, you may get approved. That's going to be a, a higher chance of an approval rate depending on if they're reading from TransUnion. Okay. Now let's go ahead and go, jump back into the other industries that this is going to affect as well. So as I mentioned, like with the automotive, they can gain deeper insights. They can reach more consumers. They're going to be able to increase approvals and response rates, offer more competitive pricing, boost marketing returns, and they'll be able to help the, the, the dealerships or anyone that's in the automotive industry grow their portfolio. Now, also to the background screening, this is going to be deep. Because that's, this is essentially when people are applying to be at an apartment complex, for example, right? And then they get denied for whatever reason. This is one of those reasons. It's because it's going to be letting people know if you have some type of fraud. If the information that you're putting on the application, even if it's for an apartment, 
is most definitely going to come back directly through their one true system. Okay. Now, again, this is only going to affect people. Like I said, this is only going to affect people that are applying with apartments that are using any of the TransUnion services. Now, that's not everyone, obviously, across the world, but it is a lot of people. TransUnion has a lot of that market share because Equifax doesn't have, uh, you know, rental screening services that's popular. I've seen Experian and TransUnion dominate this industry. So essentially, they're, they're no more just applying for something that's not a car or not a house and then saying, OK, I'm going to just put whatever I want to on the application. They're going to be looking at back end services like I mentioned to you all. The old school way of doing things is changing, okay? And so many of these companies are being sold on not just AI, but upgrading their systems because fraud was at an all-time high, 2020, 2021, and a lot of banks are still paying for that. We're not just talking about PPP loans. We're talking about approving people that should not have been approved. Giving people limits, like you guys know when people was like, oh, I got a $20,000 limit credit card. I got a $15,000. I got a $10,000. Again, to try to keep those things from happening, giving people the money when they should not have gotten the money. So it's more, it's, it's essentially digging deeper into more than just these credit scores. They're saying, okay, we see that you're 750, but how did you get there? What are your recent habits? Does it look like is things are going into a downward spiral or is this person essentially a low risk? They're going to be given not just the scores and reports, but it's looking like they're going to be given their opinion as well. So let's stay tuned for what's ever go about to come uh, from this. And who's to say how soon, how long it's going to take? We know it's not going to take a long time for Experian to start adding AI to their process, for Equifax to starting at, to start adding AI to their process. Of course, Vantage Score and FICO, this is just the beginning, all right? So, of course, if you like this video, you're most definitely going to love the next one, and I'll see you there.